adding, subtracting, balancing their books, lists, and that sort of thing were really no fun at all for the Matics. Not that they didn't have any memory. They had lots of memory. The problem was that they just forgot very easily. So, to help his friend, Maxmatic wanted to develop the Grand Squircator, which would take care of all the tedious, bothersome tasks for them. As you might have guessed, this Squircator would be made mainly of squirts. First of all, the Grand Squircator would have to have a memory. It would also have an entrance, or input, to store whatever the Matrix needed in the memory. And it would need a sort of calculator, or processor, as it's called, in order to carry out operations on the things stored in the memory. Finally, it needed an exit, or output, in order to display or write what was in the memory. Memory, processor, input, output. This, then, was the basic design of the Squircator. But, could you really build a reliable memory using Squirks? Remember Professor Mac 1's experiments with his battery? Connect a Squirk's tail to the positive end of the battery, and it takes on what's called electrical state 1. Connect the Squirk's tail to the negative end of the battery, and it takes on electrical state 0. And please note, that the squirk remains in the state it's been put in even if we take away the battery. It will rest in this state indefinitely until we decide to change its state. The squirk's tail is an input, but it also has an output, and this output can be connected to the input of a second squirk, which makes this... All this happened. And if the second squirk is also a squirk flasher, this happened. So, the squirks were like memories. Very small memories, though, since they could only remember two things, zero or one. How, then, you might well ask, is it possible to write letters? whole words, or even entire sentences in the memory of the Squirkator. 